If you're thinking that you want to take that action step, why wait? Book your session right now. Go to liberateyourself.com. Click on either Liberate Hollywood or Liberate Emporium. See our amazing practitioners and who resonates most with you. And then book a session via Skype, phone, or in person. We're here for you, and it's your time to start creating your life. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? No, you're good. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Oh my God. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Lonnie. <laughs> it's another Deep Cuts. Yes. Yes. Welcome all. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Um, today, we have like a sort of nebulous... Mm -hmm cloud of things we want to talk about, yeah. um, but we don't have that much time, so we're just going to get right into it. Let's I wanted to talk about trauma mm -hmm. and some new, more alternative techniques for treating trauma. Um, yes. yeah. yeah. You have anything to say about that? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely new <laughs> techniques out there. I mean, we all know of EMDR um, as, as one of the techniques for trauma. I'm a, I have a hypnosis and NLP background, so I kind of typically use um, eye movement integration. Um, so it's similar, you know, a little similar to EMDR, not sure. But um, a lot of people might yeah. not know what EMDR is. Can yeah. You, can you so basically it's sort of like, sounds weird, but sometimes um, I guess the official therapists that use EMDR, I think they use a light typically or, you know, some people can I use a finger. I got the little beeps with beeps. the um, yeah. hand stimulation things when I did it. Oh, yeah, because mm -hmm. you've had it done. So, um, so is it, are you... Typically, moving you're moving your eyes, eyes are closed, which is what's funny. So EMDR stands for eye movement desensitization reprocessing, right? So yeah. um, the, I guess the idea is that the you know when you have trauma, it gets stuck like mm -hmm. in your brain, literally, and it yeah. just eh, rah, rah, <laughs> like just on this loop. And I've experienced that; it's really not fun. Yeah. Um, and so there's a certain like stimulation mm -hmm. that can be done um, that helps move it through, and it really works. Yeah. Um, but it, it's like the eye movement thing. It your eye, it doesn't have to be eye movement. So. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I think what EMDR is doing is basically um, accessing your whole brain. Because sort of when we get yeah. stuck in trauma states or stuck in negative emotions, we're stuck in one hemisphere of the brain. So it's basically attempting to get a cohesion of, of using both at like hemispheres of the brain, essentially. Yeah. So when I do NLP through eye movement integration, it's a little different, but we're essentially, you know, using our finger or whatever, pointer, and, and sort of having someone associate into that negative emotion or, you know, emotion that they're not really wanting anymore. Yeah. And essentially actually having, moving their eyes like in different quadrants. Um, and when I think about it through NLP, People know about eye accessing. So essentially, how I see it is when we're accessing certain areas, so for instance, if um, you're kind of accessing the, if you're looking up to left or to the right or just looking up, usually typically it's accessing your visual, your visual um, sensory abilities. So you're either thinking like of something in the past, if you're looking to the left, or if you're looking huh. up to the right, you're thinking of something in the future, like you're kind of a future concept. Um, it doesn't always go that way, so I typically say, like, if you look up, it's visual. Um, and if you kind of see someone look side to side, it's auditory. So you're thinking of a, right. of a, 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 a sound and memory in the past and kind of the future conceptual. And when you look down, it's either self-talk or you're getting an emotional, like, uh, emotional state so you're kind of accessing like self-talk and your emotions and feelings and sensations it could be tactile as well wow. so when i think of i move integration when i do it you can sort of sense like if someone's getting upset and you can see what qu quadrant they're in like if they're visual and then wow. you kind of just have them look down it kind of starts shifting the emotion and it, mo it shifts the motion in the body as well so it's an interesting so that's how i perceive like kind of eye movement integration is kind of like is so, and sometimes we you know typically people will look down if they're getting upset, you know, because they're in a feeling state. So if you have someone start looking up while they're like thinking of that memory or association mm -hmm. of, and then they start looking up and they're like, it almost is jarring because they're like, wait a minute. Like it kind of shifts their, their way of thinking. So it's, that's how I perceive it. I don't know, like the technically EMDR, but 
eye movement integration is that kind of how I kind of um, put that all together. Yeah, yeah. And, and just for a little background, because I'm actually kind yeah. of, I have a huge background in like anxiety, PTSD, mm -hmm. psychology, and like mm -hmm. all these different um, like energy healing yeah. techniques, but I'm <laughs> new to EMDR actually, mm -hmm. or the, the concept of like, like healing trauma in the body that's yeah. like physically um, super new to me, have had some amazing results even recently with like, a, you know, cause I do have PTSD. So, you know, re-triggered mm -hmm. recently and like worked through it the fastest I've ever worked through it with her help. And I'm just like blown away. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about it being um, the trauma being literally in the body, it's something that I never realized before. And the, the EMDR, like it's in the brain, but it, 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 it's associated a lot of the time to feeling states in the body. Yeah. And so um, I guess this like leads us, we have other stuff that we're gonna talk about too. Yeah. But I'm curious like how you got into the, what's your term? A lot of people it's called, say EMDR, but you have mm -hmm. an officially a different technical modality that you practice yeah, with it. Yeah, it would be like eye movement integration. Eye movement integration. That's how I know about it through NLP. And yeah. it's like mm -hmm. the similar slash the same, mm -hmm. yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so it, yeah. you got, and then what is NLP? <laughs> so uh, so many NLP things. is Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's like okay. a really big, heady name, but it's okay. uh, basically two linguists, um, Bandler and Grinder, they were linguists, and they just were wanting to model um, really effective practitioners, mm -hmm. like um, and, and be like, how are these certain people creating massive change? Like, what's going on? So they modeled like v Virginia Satir, who was like this amazing family therapist, and and, the, and also um, Fritz Perls, who is the father of Gestalt therapy, parts okay. therapy, and also Milton Erickson, you know, who's like the father of hypnosis. And the worst. Don't so, anybody. yeah, so all these people. <laughs> so they wanted to know, like, how are these people making change? And they figured out their techniques or protocols of, like, change making mm -hmm. and kind of was, then showed people how to do it. So these are basically modelers, people who, who have seen successful people and kind of broke it down and see, like, how are they creating success? So NLP, in a short way, is kind of um, um, a model of, effective communication and positive change and how we can do that for others. So it's basically how we operate um, as opposed to oftentimes we get caught in like content, like we'll, mm -hmm. we'll tell our story and right. we'll kind of like constantly tell our story and, and get a circle around. But NLP basically doesn't always focus on the content, but the form. It's it. They're interested in how we operate as people. Like are we, are we, you know, when we get upset about something, are we seeing an image? How is that image? Is it up close? Is it moving? Is it in color? And kind of like dissipating the negative emotion by altering the image and things like that, like sound or like feeling states. So yeah. It's amazing because the sessions, I've had two sessions with Lonnie mm -hmm. um, and you're using like at least four different techniques. And, yeah. and so, yeah. and I'm like in, so I'm not really like paying attention to mm -hmm. what's happening when. Yeah. Um, but it's like super cohesive. I mean, there's like a lot going on. Yeah, there's um, a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So mm -hmm. it's like a combination of hypnosis. Hypnosis. NLP. Um, eye movement desensitization. Yeah, sort of. Eye movement integration. Yeah. Integration. And also self-soothing kind of psychocentry like technique. So yeah, since motion can be trapped in the body, mm -hmm. you know, it's sort of like, um, you know, ways of self-soothing. So you kind of, you might be feeling the emotion, but when you start doing certain techniques with your body, sort of like movements, almost almost like EFT and things like that, like you know points on your face or you know on your body, um, it basically rewires your brain. So because when you're doing self soothing, like mm -hmm. kind of like psychosensory like touching techniques, right. you're essentially um, giving yourself doses of serotonin, which is kind of like that well-being right. and happiness. Safety. Yeah. Safety. So, like if you're running yeah. from a tiger, you're probably not going to be, yeah. your brain is not going to be, so your brain's, yeah. you're feeling this and your brain's like, I must be safe because, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. So it's sort of like tricking your brain and your body right. by like associating to the negative emotion, but then doing all these self-soothing techniques and kind of taking your brain away from thinking about that. You know? I mean, you guys, it really works. Like, yeah. I wish that I knew about this, like, 19 years yeah. ago when I had my tra traumatic incident that, yeah. you know, prompted me to have panic attacks and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, and it, it's interesting because the self-soothing is, yeah. um, well, 
it's kind of also like a bilateral brain stimulation, just yeah. like um, the eye movement. Yeah, the integration. Process, yeah, integration. totally. Remember, it's all yeah. the terminologies are like killing <laughs> yeah. my head, but yeah. EMDR, yeah, um, just, eye movement integration, yeah. that kind of thing. So, um, and even havening, which is like another yeah. Yeah. St- official sort of school of thought that uses a lot of somatic yeah. techniques. It's all bilateral, bilateral brain stimulation. Yeah. And, um, yeah, totally. Yeah. So my experience with it, um, because like I've gone through little bouts of anxiety in my life enough to know my patterns. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could see myself like kind of spiraling and it's been years too. So I'm like way out of practice with cognitive behavioral therapy. I thought I had worked through this. Mm-hmm. And, um, so anyway, I've never, never tried any somatic therapies or mm-hmm. any hypnosis, nothing like that to treat this. Um, and you're, I know my brain is reprocessing it because within like a 24 hour period, 24 to 48 hour period, like it would almost be like pop, like something, I would just start seeing things differently. Mm. Um, It's like your brain, because you're bringing in like a whole perspective in both hemispheres of the brain, and then probably also God only knows what else you're doing with NLP and like (laughs) hypnosis at the same time. Um, But like, it was like these perspective shifts that I was able to get where I used to have to, like I'm a big fan of cognitive behavioral mm-hmm. therapy too, but that's a lot of work. And it, I've always felt like I was kind of pushing a house up a hill mm, with that. Yeah. So this is like a much faster way where something just pops, it just shifts. Yeah. So at least that was my experience of it. And I've read other places that that's actually like pretty common. Mm. Um, and that there's like a relatively high success rate with these types of techniques that use somatic what do you call it, self-soothing? Yeah, I call it self-soothing, but it's like a psychosensory techniques, you know, because you're like yeah. touching your body while you're, you know, while you're associating to an uncomfortable emotion, but it's also taking you out of that emotion. I mean, that's what ultimately it's right. supposed to do, like it's meant to do. It's like, yeah, you're associating to this uncomfortable feeling, but after you're doing all this, and and I am doing hypnosis and LP, mm. after you're disassociating and doing all these pattern interruptions, <clears throat> which are pattern interruptions in your brain, essentially. Like, so amazing. You know, so it's like, it's, you know, you might step into this, but then, then I'm, I'm doing all these things to get you out of that mindset or out of that feeling by doing all these other things. Then your, your body and your mind, it's like, cannot connect the two at the end. Like, you might be aware of yeah. the, that memory and might be aware of like, oh yeah, there's this an issue or this might be a trauma, or this might be an anxiety, but then you don't feel the same about it at the yeah. end. And that's essentially what it's doing, it's like d- disconnecting the two. It's amazing too, yeah. like the brain, we know that the brain does change. I mean, it's like even the most conventional, like psychiatrist will tell you that we know now that it does, but it's amazing yeah. how quickly it changes. Like yeah. like neural networks are being like pruned and um, and growing and connecting like in, in split seconds all yeah. the time. Um, the most interesting thing that I'm really kind of like fascinated with right now about um, the self-soothing and the bilateral stimulation of the brain and all of that stuff is that it gets me into my body. Mm-hmm. Um, so spending years and years dealing with anxiety just through mental techniques, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is like, repla- it's almost like the law of attraction. You're like mm-hmm. replacing crappy thoughts with like better ones. Yeah. And um I mean, it's, there's a lot more structure to it that you can go into, but, and that stuff does work. It really Mm -hmm. does. But what it didn't do for me was help me connect with the negative feelings in my body. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I was always just up here trying to figure out what was going on. And I think I'm connecting the dots of my initial trauma was um, connected to like some really difficult physical feelings for me. Mm -hmm. So um, going into that, is like a totally new yeah like angle <laughs> yeah for me but it, it's actually been like super enlightening I'm like oh I just it's not as threatening I'm like I just don't feel well mm-hmm. like I just don't feel well um and when you go into it you're allowing it to like move through right mm-hmm. so yeah yeah anyway that's been my experience that's great it's like some of the anxiety is almost even caused by the physical feelings, Mm -hmm. sometimes even before the negative thought, which is you think it's like always the other way around and it's not always because these triggers can like be so physical, so. Yeah, and I think that happens often. It's like we have that physical feeling and then we'll have a thought or like we'll see something, some image. I mean, it's probably different for everyone. Something must be wrong, I don't feel well, you know. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah. but yeah, I mean, that's why, you know, all, all these modalities, especially like, 
It doesn't seeming it doesn't seem to be, but like hypnosis is very it seems very heady and it is, it's very mental, but we also always are connecting it to the body. You know, we're always yeah. connecting it to like, okay, like that feeling, where do you feel it inside? You know, very NLP. You know, it's like because we we do know that like emotions you do feel it in the body, you know? So it's 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 finding that way to disconnect it for yourself so it doesn't bother you, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's still, like, like I think, to me, there's still, like, a, an air of mystery in the process mm-hmm. of, like, exactly yeah. how it works. I'm mm-hmm. just, like, I want to talk about it because, like, I've never had better results with anything I've ever done for mm-hmm. anxiety, mm-hmm. panic attack, and, and trauma. Like, mm-hmm. pff, period. Not in 20 yeah. years. Yeah. So I'm like, go see Lonnie <laughs> if anyone's having issues. Um, and, you know, for me, like, I am a healer. Like, mm-hmm. I've been fine for years. So it's like these things yeah. can, these triggers can come, like, you know, years later or, like, totally out of the blue. Um, yeah. But I know that you've shared in other episodes in the past that you've had your struggles with anxiety as well. So I'm curious, oh, like, for sure. you know, I'm sure we don't get here because everything's yeah. like going so swimmingly, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, but yeah, like all the time. I still, to this day, I mean, you know, we can always find new anxieties if we, if we want to look for them. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> but, but yeah, and I've, you know, the techniques that I've done, I've had them done for me. You know, I've had, right. I've had other practitioners, you know, helping me through sort of some things out. And, I, and when I see it helping me, yeah. that's when I usually bring it in and, like, show others, you know. Yeah. Not only how to, you know, I'm also here to, like, as a practitioner and helping, but I also want to empower people with these techniques. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically how I kind of view things. Is like, you know, if it's helped me and empowered me, and yeah. I'm just going to try to show it to others and see if it helps them. That's yeah, I mean, we're, we're both energy healers too, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, um, you know, that's, that's a bona fide realm. I mean, I've had amazing results from, mm-hmm. like, all of the energy healing techniques that I use. But this is just, like, this new... Sometimes things yeah. can feel really overwhelming. And yeah. there's nothing unspiritual about, like, the third dimension. It's, like, your body is, like, the most dense form of energy that there is. And sometimes, yeah. like, that's a good point of entry when you're dealing with trauma. Um, so it has been so effective. And um, I just yeah. want to spread the word <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, and I'm glad it helped you. I mean, yeah. That's great. Like, I, I'm like, I need to get trained. That's the other <laughs> thing is like a lot of these techniques, yeah. like I think, you know, are done by like more traditional mental health um, professionals. Mm-hmm. But like you said, with the NLP training, you got the eye movement yeah, integration, integration training as well. And then like yeah. the self suit, the somatic techniques. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, like, a lot of different takes on those, but, yeah. you know, you can come see Lonnie or you can, like, Google YouTube and things yeah. like that. I mean, even even EFT, as she mentioned, yeah. like, if you guys are familiar with, like, EFT tapping, I've used that successfully for, for years, but mm-hmm. I just want to, like, yeah. be clear. I'm, like, that doesn't hold a candle yeah. to, like, this whatever, the bilateral, mm-hmm. st- and, it, and we, we did it for an extended period of time, too. I mean, mm-hmm. it was probably, like, an hour to 90 minute. Yeah. 90 minutes where I'm constantly just, you know, um, like doing all of these things. And so like the extended period of time and it's, it's much more pressure than EFT. Yeah. It is hitting certain points, but like, it's definitely like the big guns when you compare the two, I have experience with, I guess, both techniques now and, um, like not to knock EFT, it's great, but like this is on a whole other level for sure. Yeah, and it always helps, what, you know, if there's a practitioner who can weed you through the certain emotions and memories that pop up as yeah. these come along. Because, you know, sometimes that happens when you're doing all the stuff. You're like, oh, wow, something I didn't think about popped up into my mind and like how to, you know, and, and to help somebody kind of wade through that, you know, a little bit of emotional turmoil that could happen, you know, when these oh, techniques, yeah. you know, doing all these techniques. So it's always good to, you know, kind of have somebody that knows how to, I guess, direct you through that, so. No, that's a good point, too, because, um, you know, like, even though we could be healers, it's like, we're not gonna, you can do some on yourself, but, like, you're always a massive blind spot, and, you know, of course, I was, like, doing tapping in, like, the week leading up to our our session, EFT, and it's, like, not cutting it, you know, uh, for what the level of what I needed, and to have Lonnie be able to, like, perceive I don't know. I was really, I wouldn't have been able to walk myself through any of that on my own. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, especially when you're in it. Yeah. When you're in it, you just can't. And, and so, and so surprising too, especially with like fear and anxiety, PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, It's like, 
so many light bulb moments for me now is like we, we're trying to conjure up this original uh, feeling, right? So I'm mm-hmm. expecting like I need to feel fear. I need to feel fear. Yeah. Of course, like, <laughs> it's like you know hard to make yourself feel things, but yeah. but what actually is underneath it for me was the grief, and I was like, it's not mm-hmm. working. Like I can't, I can't like get there. And she's like, no. But I was like crying. I was emotional. She's yeah. like, no. We need to roll with the grief piece, and yeah. that's actually what it was. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have the perspective myself to be able to recognize that because yeah. underneath the fear, there's always usually some level of sadness or grief, right? Yeah, it's like anger. You know, anger is like mm-hmm. there, but it's really something good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, emotions are like onions. <laughs> Peeling back the layers. <laughs> I'm like, when am I going to be done? <laughs> Probably not till I'm dead, I guess. But yeah, yeah. we're always evolving, right? Well, no, I'm, I mean, I'm doing great right you now. Are. Like, yeah. you know, I've been doing great for years, and I'm just like super grateful that these techniques exist because, yeah. like, this is working through a, um, a much, much deeper layer, and um, to be able to to be able to connect more with the physical body, which so many people see as less spiritual or mm. less holistic. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, yeah, yeah you, you got to get in there with yeah. the, like the meat suit. You yeah. Got to get in the tissue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, was there, I know you do like a combo of techniques, but like, oh, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. No worries. Um, I was just curious mm-hmm. if um, yeah. there's one in particular. I mean, I know hypnosis is kind of your baby, right? Yeah. Is there one that's floored you more than the others? I mean, honestly, I think it's a combination of all of them. <laughs> well, that's what I'm floored by. And that's why I'm like, I don't even know where I would find another human being, honestly, yeah. that, that combines the, the same things that you do, like in the way that you do. But Yeah, and I'm still trying to like evolve that, you know? It's still, you know, as a practitioner, kind of like, how do I use this and what do I do? So it's, yeah, it's a learning, it's a learning process for me too. So it's like it's different for each session. Totally. Right? It's like improv. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So you don't know what, you know, you don't know what you're going to be facing and how to confront it. So you're kind of just being curious and open to the process. And if the, the other person, the client you're working with is equally as open and, and curious, then it's a good place to be in really. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Well, what else? Is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you think is relevant to like healing trauma with these sort of newer techniques and combination of techniques? I just think it's it's because people are sitting it with trauma often for years and years and years, like and they're kind of obviously yeah, or they just want to be over it and be done with it. Just if you're just like gentle with yourself and kind of like just be open and hopeful that like you don't need to be in this forever but also yeah. don't be like I feel like you know sometimes you're a desperation you know oh yeah and if and, and sort yeah. of if you're in that desperation it might be harder for you to kind of be sitting in that state of openness and curiosity so it's like it's this kind of uh, I don't know I feel like if people just come with like a childlike and open mind and just start thinking of ways of playing Sounds mm. weird, but come with a playful mind and be like, let's see, let's see this, what if, what if the possibilities of this can work? Just thinking of myself, like when I came into your session, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I was not chill yeah. and I was like so scared. I was like, nothing's going to work if I still have this resurgence after all these years, yeah. like nothing's going to work. I was so scared. I'm yeah. like so grateful it did work actually. Yeah. And like, you know what? Sometimes but, that might happen. You know what I mean? Like, but it worked it, even yeah. though I didn't have a playful mind. Yeah. 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 That's true. Mm-hmm. And I think, yes, it's true. And I think that just is a testament because you put yeah. the work in. I mean, we were sitting there doing some deep work. Yeah, so we it's, yeah, we were both open and, and curious and be like, let's just see how this goes. Yeah. You know, and I think that's important. It's that kind of mindset. And just, you know, if, and if you feel like you do something and it doesn't work, try something else. Like, it's yeah. not, just don't give up on yourself, you know? Yeah, well, there's not really any point in that. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, you got to keep going. You got to. Yeah. Perseverance is the key. For sure, for sure. And there's mm-hmm. always like a deeper, there's always that deeper piece and like yeah. new new things popping up all the time. Like this bilateral yeah. brain stimulation, eye movement, integration thing yeah. is like a brand new concept with like just a couple decades old and yeah. like only becoming, you know, more well-known 
even recently with like statistics and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. like th these are techniques, by the way, if you guys haven't heard, like, you know, very, very high success rates with like war veterans mm -hmm. even. So yeah. we're talking like, you know, extreme trauma levels that, that these yeah. techniques are working with. So like whatever you have that you're dealing with, the chances are pretty high that, you know, you can be helped yeah. with something like this, even if nothing else has worked. Yeah, and just mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, you're constantly evolving and changing every day, you know? Yeah. So you're getting closer to having that relief. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel better. <laughs> like, ding, ding. Yes. You can. Yeah, you can and you will. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So open to that possibility. It exists. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, Lonnie. Uh, like, many thanks to you, like a thousand times oh. over. Um, I owe you a lot of astrology readings, too. <laughs> but, yeah, um, definitely. Thank you for being open to the process. It's oh, like I was, really a treat. I was super open. I was yeah. like, fix me. Um, you don't need to be fixed, Rebecca. No, and I, r I realize that now. Don't mm -hmm. need to be fixed. Um, mm -mm. So, yeah, um, you can find Lonnie uh, here. Yeah, at Liberate. Liberate. Do you do sessions remotely for stuff like this? I would be open totally to doing yeah. sessions remotely. Yeah, because it's possible. Okay. When if I had it done, it was remote sessions yeah. for myself. So yeah, it's totally possible. Sweet. Yeah. So wherever you are in the world, um, you can yeah. holler. Yes. Holler. <laughs> and you need to go to see Rebecca for amazing readings because it's yeah. good stuff. Energy healing too, yeah. which also works, but sometimes when you're in a panic attack, you need some bilateral brain stimulation. <laughs> good stuff. It's all but good yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's all here to help you. Yeah. It's and us. Really I mean, yeah. We always play. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good one, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for everyone. tuning in. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. If you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, at Liberate Hollywood, all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself. <laughs>